Well, hello everyone, and welcome to a rather scruffy-looking uh, start to another episode of Dunsville Zoo. Uh, I thought I'd start just here with the tree kangaroo complex that we're going to be working on in this episode. Uh, I've already sort of selected my building materials. These are, of course, subject to change. So we've got the Australia logs, we've got the Australia wood, uh, the roofing... There's this fence from a blueprint. Uh, there's this fence that I've created myself. And then these red squares are where the housing units are going to be. Uh, sort of roughly, I think, anyway. <laughs> um, I've hit a few snags with the tree kangaroo uh, complex. So I've shortened this habitat for the males. We've got a staff path here and this middle habitat is going to be a breeding complex stroke a young rearing complex so if uh let's say we have four females and two of them get pregnant then we'll move two females into this middle complex here and they can rear their young um, away from the males and away from the other females just in case there's any jealousy or anything like that that emerges um, this is roughly the best design I've found. My other option was to split this habitat in half and have this area be the, uh, the sort of other paddock, the child rearing paddock. But um, I decided to go uh, off at the back, so most of it's offshore, but there, there will be some access, some viewing opportunities to inside the uh, house, potentially. Um, I may also move the house back here, but I do kind of like the idea that uh, the staff enter the house here and then they have access to, we'll move that gate obviously, they have access to the habitat here and then this one they have to go through the habitat to access the house. And then this one would probably be the same. They have access to the house and then the habitat. So the layout was the first sort of hiccup, the first sort of snag. The second one um, is tree kangaroo habitats are rather boring looking. <laughs> I've been doing some research, sort of getting some ideas I had some ideas in my mind, but I wanted to check to see if they were going to be practical or not. Um, looking at different tree kangaroo habitats, there's a lot that are indoors, and the ones that aren't indoors are pretty boring. <laughs> it's just some suspended like logs, um, some branches, a couple of bushes, and... That's that's what they're calling a tree kangaroo habitat. And it just looks really boring. <laughs> um, I think the most natural looking one I've seen is... Uh, in the UK, I would say Chester Zoo, but that's not a Lumholtz tree kangaroo. Uh, that's a um, Goodfellows tree kangaroo. And they share that with the uh, dusky padamelons. But essentially, I uh, I was a bit stuck because I don't want a boring habitat for the tree kangaroos because we're going to be building for three of them. Um, I think you know, Bronx Zoo, their tree kangaroo habitat isn't bad. It's not fantastic, <laughs> but it isn't bad. Uh, there's Zoo Ostrava as well, and a couple of other places where they're not bad, but they're not what I was looking for. <laughs> so... Hopefully you'll have seen some of the images that I've put on the screen. You'll, you'll see just how, in my opinion anyway, how boring they are. 
but that's what works in zoos. So we're going to incorporate some of that boring design, unfortunately. <laughs> but of course, I'm going to plant this quite heavily. And there's going to be a lot of vertical space for the tree kangaroos as well. But it needs to be designed in such a way that they can't escape into the habitats next door or into other habitats. Because I like that, you know, there's branches and stuff hanging over the path. I, I really like that design. But it, it doesn't really make much um, It's not realistic, I suppose, to have trees in a habitat touching trees outside of a habitat when the animal within the habitat can climb. Because you, it, it, the animal will escape, essentially. Um, Tasmanian devils don't have to worry about, because they're not going to climb. Really. They have some climbing abilities, but they're not going to scale a tree, I don't think. Uh, platypus aren't going anywhere. Neither are the yellow-footed rock wallabies. Uh, monarch butterflies. We're now at max capacity in here. Not that you can tell, really. Um, I might change the viewing because this is a custom cage that I built myself. If we just go here and we go for... Yeah, you can see it's a custom cage. It's slightly taller. I don't know if the glass would have a better viewing opportunity. Netting doesn't seem to have a better viewing opportunity. Glass does or none, which is what it's set to at the moment. But yeah, the monarch butterflies are at max capacity. Oops. Uh, they could potentially escape from here. The, the butterflies are small enough to crawl, not fly through, but crawl through the gaps in the chain link. But even then, I, I don't think having the monarch butterflies escape into the Australia house would be such a bad thing, so I'm not too bothered about that. I think, you know, for realism purposes, I, I genuinely don't see that as much of an issue. We do get some vagrant monarch butterflies in the United Kingdom anyway, so even if they escaped from the Australia house into the wild, it, it'd be all right. Um, there aren't really any flowers in here to sustain the monarch butterflies anywhere, so they're sort of inclined to stay in one of the few areas in the Australia house what has flowers, which of course provides nectar. Um, but yeah, so the tree kangaroos then. So the design here might not be final. I'm going to build the male habitat first. It's the smaller of the three. Um, again, this fence design might not stay. I created it myself. I like it in a sense that, you know, it's sort of vaguely outback themed. We've got privacy for the tree kangaroos. The tree kangaroos aren't going to be able to escape because I'm going to put like a rock barrier on the inside so they can't climb up these logs. But I'm not 100% convinced on that. It might need a, a daintier um, fence design. Something like this maybe. But we'll see anyway. Um, but I will come back when we've well, when I um, have experimented a bit and constructed what I want to construct for the tree kangaroo habitat. So I shall see you all um, in just a few seconds for you. It may well be a few hours, if not longer, for me. So I shall see you all shortly. Well, welcome back, everyone. I have finished one of the three tree kangaroo habitats. So we're just going to have a quick look at the male habitat, and then I will go ahead and construct the uh, the breeding compound and then the female habitat. You can see straight away uh, we've come to this 
area uh, for the tree kangaroos, for the males anyway. It's not 100% finished, but it's like 99% finished. So you can go left, or you can go right. We're going to go right to start with. And I'm yet to do the custom... Uh, ah, I forgot the name of them now. <laughs> These things. The uh, posters? Banners? Billboards. Uh, the custom billboards. Uh, uh, yet to do them. You can see that I changed my planning for the fence. In fact, if we just quickly rush through. I was going to use this fence. I did try. Um, it looked really chunky for that habitat because it's such a small habitat. So I went for a daintier fence, which I did think I would have to do anyway, uh, but I did end up having to do a daintier uh, fence. So I just went for this same fence that features quite a lot actually around the Australia house. It's the the metal beams with a glass pane. So here's your first viewing opportunity for the tree kangaroos. You can actually see into their house at the moment. That's one of the things that I need to finish. We need to put like a door or something on these. Uh, there's our Lumholtz tree kangaroo male. We only have the one at the moment. The others are in transit. And of course we are paused at the moment as well. I need to do this back fence. Uh, it's going to become a wall, actually, a back wall. Um, everything else is pretty much done. Again, we need to do the custom billboard. I've got one of the education points. We're going to do another one just around the corner. Uh, but you can see to their indoor accommodation here. And we'll pop in there in just a second. But there's this, which is... I mean, I have no idea what that is for a start, but um, we we come down here and the staff actually enter on the back. They don't enter into the house because this is implied. And then obviously they come in and there's this and then keeper access. And then this is all wood chipped. There are some plants in here, of course, a bit of enrichment. But primarily this is where the tree kangaroos would just sort of Come and chill and relax and lay around because if they don't want to be pestered by the guests because this is one way glass so that's there and then this is going to be like planted up a little bit not too much i don't want to block the view but this is going to be planted up a little bit um we'll get onto the habitat itself in just a moment I'm going to put another education point sort of here, smack bang in the middle. And then around here you have this view. So you could see them up on here. You can see them in the trees. Because this tree is a climbable tree, so you could see them up in the trees. See them on the platform. And then we have the the breeding compound which will be done off camera in just a few seconds when I finish this segment. And the same for the female habitat as well. So they're probably going to stay this sort of design, you know, these wooden sort of logs and then the metal fencing. I do like the other um, fence that I designed this one. It just doesn't really work for such a small animal, the tree kangaroos. Um, so maybe we can find another animal for it to work on. Or maybe we just keep the wall bit. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens anyway. As far as the habitat itself is concerned then, um, obviously the staff enter around the back. This is pretty open. There's not a lot of planting here. Uh, we've got the eucalyptus feeders, because of course they are based on the koala. There's our Lumholtz tree kangaroo there. Little cute fella. 
Um, they've got a feed-in platform here. This ramp is for the staff to access it. And then there's all this climbing enrichment here. And then climbing enrichment over there and there as well. And this is a climbable tree. They're climbable. Some enrichment there as well. That's climbable. This one isn't. Um, I've got eucalyptus feeder here as well. So that's that's their habitat, and I really like how it's turned out so far. Um, so yeah, it, it's ninety nine percent done, I'd say, maybe ninety eight actually. Got to put something up there for the roof. Um, got to do the doors, and I've got to do this back wall and one education point. It'll take a couple of seconds. So I shall see you all very shortly for the other two uh, tree kangaroo habitats let me know let me know i'm not finishing the episode yet what am i about <laughs> i shall see you all in just a couple of seconds although it'll probably be a couple of days for me well welcome back to the final part of the lumholtz tree kangaroo habitat builds of course i have the three habitats i showed this habitat off in the previous part of this episode but i've now finished it. Uh, we've got some planting out the front here. Uh, we can actually see one of the male tree kangaroos inside the house. Oh, I've called it a lodge, but I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> I did put these canopy things on to try and create a bit more shade. Uh, so it's easy to see through the windows because the sun is just like absolutely glaring in here. But uh, it doesn't really work. <laughs> we have our uh, common wombats, of course, and they have given birth. There's one of the young. So we'll look at them in another episode. In fact, both the male tree kangaroos there. These are, of course, Lumholtz tree kangaroo. Um, we are going to have matches and uh, Goodfellows tree kangaroo. In the Asian section. So this is what you get at eye level. So that's that. Gee, tiny little one bit. And there's the other one. Didn't even see that one there. And then the breeding paddock um, slightly different it's less sort of grand as the other two you only have the one viewing opportunity um, it's fairly limited it's a generic sort of education board and then of course if we come through here um, okay why have I ended up on the roof <laughs> this is weird. There we go. Okay. Don't know what's happening there. Uh, yeah, this is the breeding compound. Um, it's more or less finished. Obviously, this fence needs to change and something needs to go in here. Um, fill this space in a little bit. But of course, we'll be doing the Victorian Koala in the next episode, so we can work on this in the meantime. Same sort of design, you know, climbing frames, uh, feeding platforms, stuff like that. But this is so the young don't get stressed, or if we have to separate any of the tree kangaroos for whatever reason, uh, they would come in here. They can, if I can... Can we walk? Oh, we can walk on beams. Um, they can actually still see the other tree kangaroos from this habitat so I'm not too bothered about them getting lonely or anything like that and then we have this one <laughs> which is the female group of Lumholtz tree kangaroo and they've got a much larger viewing window, much larger indoor accommodation as well 
and we can actually see two of the four at the moment. There's one down here playing with the mirror mobile and there's one up there heading out because they've just been fed, I believe. But there's lots of places for them to, to perch and sleep and they've got their own spaces if they want any distance from each other as well. And then we turn the corner and this area is called the Lumholtz's Lodges. This is of course the Lumholtz's Tree Kangaroo. Uh, so we'll call this Lumholtz's Lodges. There's Frank, that I've used for scaling. Lots of staff in this area, because of course, lots of animals. Uh, there's another one of the Lumholtz Tree Kangaroos. And we're only missing one. Which is good. <laughs> And it's not good that it's missing, but it's good that we've seen three out of the four. I would say that's a good zoo visit, personally. Uh, but yes, there there are four females in here. Again, same layout. Lots of climbing structures. Um, guest viewing. It looks very natural, but you know there's still lots of opportunities for you to see the tree kangaroo. Uh, which is super important. So let's go into the habitat then and see what we're dealing with. So there's one, there's two, just check that, is that a three? Yeah, the third one's in here, that's why. So you can't even see it really from here. Oh, I mean, you can, kind of. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Now you can't see it. Uh, so there's three inside and one outside. Um, all part of the breeding... Pro oh, why does it keep doing this to me? No. Right, there we are. I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. Uh, there's lots of verticality in this habitat though. The climbing structures go much higher than they do in the other habitats. There's a viewing platform at the end for them to look at the uh, Victorian koala and just to have a view around other areas of the Australia house. There's a smaller platform here just under a tree which they can climb. And I think well, I would say in my own opinion anyway, that I achieved what I wanted to, which was I wasn't very impressed with the tree kangaroo habitats that I'd seen that I showed at the beginning of the episode. And the best one was, in my opinion, Chester. But even that wasn't like, wow. <laughs> um, so I wanted something that was very natural and very authentic to their habitat, but still retaining that zoo aspect of this is the common practice in zoos, um, which is these climbing structures and platforms and beams and stuff like that. Um, they wouldn't have eucalyptus feeders, but because they're based on the koala, we don't have much point, uh, much option really. So yeah, that is the Lumholtz lodges. Lumholtz's lodges. <laughs> done, excuse me. I got through the donation for the uh, tree kangaroos. We're not going to breed them yet. Uh, we're going to put them together when we open the zoo. And that way um, the infants, any infants, will be on show when the public turn up. Just come in and check in up the uh, platypus pond here. I can see two of them. One, two. So yeah, what else? Um, if I quickly fly <laughs> out of here, we've got Tasmanian devil statues on top of the uh, donation boxes. 
got the little Tasmanian Devil icon from the Outback Pack. Statue on the donation box. These warning signs. I just saw one earlier on actually before I started recording. I wonder where it's gone. It was over here. Up there, it's probably that one. Yeah, I reckon it was that one. Uh, yeah, the Outback Pack, Safari Pack, the Frontier Pack, the Plant Pack, all the prop packs essentially have now been updated to 1.12 and Axie, so we can now use them again. Uh, you can see I've got the, where's it gone? I've just passed it. Got the numbat signs, there's the tree kangaroo sign over there. And there should be another lum uh, numbat, yep. And then koala over here. So, uh, now that we've got the outback pack, the next two habitats, which are the Victorian koala, should and could and may well look very different because if we just go to the construction panel and go on to out back out back there we are you see we've got these clean posts we've got dark australian planks we've got corrugated iron roof uh, we've got stained iron roof, got these logs, got all this decoration. Um, got building sets, what's this one? Horizontal wooden planks. Ooh, that's really nice. Okay, yeah, I quite like that. Vertical pan planks, panks, <coughs> paneling. So yeah, we we can make this next habitat and in these two habitats we can make them look really different and unique. Because I don't want them to look like. The other koala habitats in the corner here uh, just because we've got such a large concentration of koalas in this sort of area um, I want these to look very different if we just go on the Victorian koala so they're vulnerable uh, eucalyptus forest um, so grassland, I think we'll probably stick to grassland for this one. Uh, can I have three males and four females? No interspecies bonus. So yeah, I think we'll uh, stick to grasslands for this one. Make it look a little bit barren-ish. Let's just see what kind of planting we're dealing with. And uh, grassland. So we can use the ghost gum trees, red oak grass, we can use lots of that, trodia grass, we can use lots of that, wattle, we can use lots of that. Maybe have one of these trees near the fence so that guests get a pretty good view obviously over there they're quite limited with the view they get I mean you can see our male Lucas here and you'll see our females they're just being fed actually one two three don't know where the fourth one is uh, Lucas is actually a non-breeding male now he's a uh... where does it tell you elderly genetics 
Where does it tell you? Genealogy? No. Oh, they're all elderly. And they're all infertile. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, so our koala population will probably need replenishing at some point in the future, now that they're all elderly and, unfortunately, infertile. A um, little bit decorating needs to be done on the back here. Uh, I probably won't show that on camera, to be fair. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave you with some live footage of the uh, Lumholtz tree kangaroo. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really helps me out and helps the channel grow. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at jw underscore yt. Next episode will be the Victorian koala habitats. We'll probably get them both done fairly quickly in the one episode. Then after that, it'll be the Southern Hairy Notes Wombat habitats. Um, again, fairly quick, one episode. Then after that, it'll probably be the... Uh, the sort of touching up episode where we'll redo the Numbat habitat. We'll redo the uh, yellow-footed rock wallaby habitat. And we'll just add a couple of new features to the platypus habitats. And um, the episode after that, I think, will be the tour. I think I remembered everything. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay kind. And I shall see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.